20 years ago we formed a world forum of fisher peoples in new delhi so we are back to new delhi to celebrate what we have here is small scale fisher folk from more than 40 countries across the world and all of us are saying the same thing This notion of privatization or ocean grabbing. 20 years ago we didn't speak about that. So now we, what, what we see is happening that there's a lot of encroachment into the spaces where small scale fishing communities live and where we land our fish or where we work from, where we launch from. So, and those spaces are being taken away. And they're being taken away in many different ways, either through legislation or through regulation or through what is called development. In many cases around the world, development takes the form of the building of big ports on the spaces and the landing sites where we launch from and where we land our fish from. And with these big ports, our spaces are taken away. And when our spaces like that is being taken away, it means our livelihood is being taken away. Recently, Government of India announced uh, um, a project like Sagar Mala. Why they announced Sagar Mala? To give, uh, to make mega ports and uh, it will go to Adani Group. Only for Adani, again, 54 new ports are coming. It will affect their fishing area and the fisher people. To protect the mega port, they have to construct a protection wall. So in our area, the government has planned a mega transshipment terminal uh, at a huge cost of around 30,000 crores of rupees, a mega project. To protect the port, they are going to construct a 9 kilometers length of a protection wall. So when such a length of 9 kilometer length of uh, the breakwater is constructed to protect the port, so uh, more than 20 kilometers of coastline which accommodates so many villages will automatically disappear in another 10, 10 years. High production. Most of the countries are now trying to, uh, uh, to uh, convert their water bodies or coastal lands or even lagoons into, uh, into uh, aquaculture uh, grounds. So, we cut down mangroves, we uh, add a lot of chemical pollution into the water and <coughs> that affect the fishes in those areas. When we lose the mangrove areas with aquaculture and all these practices, that highly contributed to the pollution to the uh, lagoons and water bodies and also our women Maybe more than 65%, 75% people are, women are depending on those mangrove areas for uh, catching prawns or catching some uh, fish and so on. In that context, when we lose those mangrove grounds, so women don't have any way of uh, getting uh, fish from, the, from, from, the, from those areas. So they lose their food security. That kind of development is negative development and we are completely opposed to that. So when we speak today at this General Assembly about ocean grabbing, the building of big ports is grabbing the ocean for private gain. And that private gain is the gain for corporate companies at the expense of communities. Climate change is a huge issue. For us, it is, we would like to speak about the injustice of the climate, of climate change. There is a pattern and that pattern we say is a change in the climate but that change is not driven by us that change doesn't come about because of how we work as small-scale fishers we clearly see the pollution 
we clearly see the ocean water temperature warming up. We clearly see that the fish that we used to fish is no longer there. What we also see is the sea level is rising. Now we know what the sea level, we know where the low water mark and the high water mark is because this is our life. We live there, we work there, we know what it is. So when we see the difference between the two, then we see that the sea level is rising. So all of these things are happening not because of us, but if we look out there in the ocean and we see what corporate fishing companies are doing, what big industrial fishing companies are doing, the way they destroy the ocean, the way they harvest, and their harvesting method just as trolling just drags the, their nets and it just is utter destruction. That is what we're saying is contributing to, to climate change. We face a climatic crisis. It's all over the world, not only the fisher people, but also the other communities as well. So many uh, uh, extreme weather conditions, either drought or maybe uh, floods or hurricanes or uh, many ways uh, people are affected. But in this uh, situation, the fisher people are most vulnerable because we are living uh, mostly in the sea. And when we go to the sea, we don't know what will happen in the sea. And if there is a hurricane or if there is a gale or if there is a tsunami or whatever, we are the uh, affected people, most affected people. When water, uh, water uh, temperature goes up, coral reefs start dying. You know, when it, uh, when it increase one temperature, so the coral reefs start dying. So the coral, when coral die, no more fish will uh, survive in those areas. So they, they also migrate uh, to other, other places, uh, preferable places. So that uh, directly affect the coastal communities. So we don't have any other way of life. This is the only way of life and this is our culture also. So if we lose those grounds, we lose our culture, lose our families, lose our future. Uh, lose our uh, even food and uh, other uh, income that we are gaining. A special case, a special uh, category uh, need to create for the protection of the traditional and the small case fisher folk in the UN level. This uh, General Assembly will uh, take this issue in the international level. The, those are the kinds of issues that we are grappling with and debating here in this 7th General, General Assembly of the World Forum of Fisher People. We need to protect our fish wealth, we need to protect our fisher folk.